World's first nuclear explosion took place as the Trinity test on July 16, 1945. This devastating object played a significant role in World War II and it was important to know the blast radius of the bombs, in other words, its area of influence. We are well aware of its devastating effects and it is really important to detonate it on specific places which are far enough from places where it shouldn't have its influence, like human settlements. During World War II, the British government cooperated with the US for the development of atomic bomb for the Manhattan Project. During that time, G.I. Taylor, a British dynamicist, was asked by his government to study a way to determine the output energy of these bombs. Now, anything related to these bombs were a top secret. So Taylor had to work independently from the US. He had some of the information regarding the bombs. Like the enormous energy has a really small source or in other words, the energy source has a really small volume. And that the shock waves of the blast travel in a more or less spherical manner. Now, he focused on the factors on which the blast radius depends. For sure, energy is one of the factors. More is the energy of the bomb, larger will be the area affected. It's quite natural. The next thing is time. As time progresses, the blast sphere becomes larger, hence affecting greater area. And lastly, the density of air. Being an expert in fluid dynamics, Taylor knew that these were the factors which determine how big an explosion can be. Now, we know that these are the factors with which we have to deal with. But the problem is that we don't know how the radius and these factors are related. In this situation, the thing that we use is dimensional analysis. We will assume that each term raised to some arbitrary powers are proportional to the radius and remove the proportional sign we will multiply a constant of proportionality with the right hand side. Dimensional analysis is basically dealing with units. Let's see how it works. We know that kinetic energy of a body is half mv squared where m is the mass and v is the velocity. We will represent the unit of mass as capital M within third brackets. And we know that the velocity is represented as distance over time. Here distance is represented as L, L for length and time as T, which is time. And we get the following as a dimension of energy. Time is represented as T, which is already mentioned. Density is mass over volume. The dimension of mass is m and for volume we know that it is the unit of distance cubed. We use meter cube or centimeter cube. So we know that the dimension of volume is l cubed. So the dimension of density is as follows. Now it's obvious that the dimension of the blast radius is l. So is the dimension of the right hand side. So we get this on simplifying and by using the laws of indices. Now all we have to do is solve these equations. Now comparing right hand side and the left hand side, we observe that there is no m present on the left hand side. So for obvious reasons, the power of m must be 0. The power of L on the left hand side is 1 and again the power of T is 0 on the left hand side. From the first equation we get x equals minus z. Plugging in this in the second equation we get minus 2z minus 3z equals 1 and from the third equation we have y equals 2x. From the second equation, we have z as minus 1 over 5. Using this, we can say 
that x is 1 over 5 and so y is 2 over 5. So we have the exponents now. So we can write the formula like this. But it's not looking so good. Let's raise both the sides to the power of 5 and make energy the subject. Okay, we have it now. Now what about this constant C0? Where did this come from? Well, it basically came from C which had undergone manipulation. A good way to approximate this C0 is this. Here gamma is a specific heat ratio which is basically the ratio between the specific heat of gas at constant pressure to that with constant volume. These are all based on experiments. The ratio of gamma or the gamma is equal to 1.4 for air at standard temperature and pressure. This gives us an approximation for C0 which is approximately 1.036. In 1947, a clip of the Trinity test was made public. Using the approximation, it was found that the yield was about 22 kilotons of TNT, whereas the actual yield was 20 kilotons of TNT. And that brings us an error of just 10%, which to be honest is pretty good.